Welcome to the special edition we have going today of Beers and Bites with our co-host Chris Jordan and Jeremy Murdershaw. Our special guest today is Chris Roberts, who, like myself, has been around the block a few times. However, I think he's probably felt a whole lot more pain than I ever have with the depth of the cybersecurity knowledge that he has uh, going on. So I'm quite sure you're going to enjoy our discussion this afternoon and looking forward to uh, discussing various issues. So with that, uh, Jeremy, uh, what beer did you bring today? Well, my primary beer today is going to be the Lost Coast uh, Hazy IPA. Nice 6.7%. And then because this is going to be a fun conversation, I also brought the, uh, the Elysian Dayglo IPA. Okay. Like a, as a uh, kind of thing on that one. <laughs> exactly. As a backup. <laughs> So, Chris Jordan, what did you bring today? I, I, I got, I got a, green, a green can. It's oh. uh, from Licking Hole Creek. It's, a, it's, the, <laughs> <laughs> it's the, 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 the nuclear nugget. So we're going to be looking forward to that one. And then the, to, I got my, my Voodoo Ranger, which is my, my low-end hazy IPA, which is a 5.5. It's, it's, we'll find out if it's a little step up from Corona. And uh, a little bit. Sorry, Chris, man, we're waiting for yours. We're kind of excited for this one. I'm, I'm like you and your, you and your freaking guys in your single digits. I mean, like God's sakes, people, <laughs> put some hair on that chest. All right. Uh, so <laughs> for my part, I'm bringing a wimpy uh, local buzz, which is a local Texas uh, ale that uh, with honey and rye. So it'll be interesting to give that a run. And Mr. Roberts, please share yours. All right. Yeah, I've got a bitch fest about this one first, because as much as I love the guys over at Abyss, this whole concept of putting bloody uh, um, wax and stuff on the top of it, oh, somebody shit. needs to be smacked upside the head for this shit, to be perfectly honest. I love the idea, but it drives me nuts. If you can't support it for four years, we need to have another conversation. Anyway, so this is the Abyss. This is the 2016 Reserve. Um Ooh. Nice. Yeah, it, it's an old beastie. Uh, this is actually a lower end on my end. This is only 11.4. So it's like, you know, double plus or whatever you guys are stuff. Wow, wow. And uh, yeah. We'll Some have of the stuff shotgun I, arms. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Motor <laughs> oil of uh, oh, man. <laughs> that's 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 the viscous level on that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just, so the whole, for me, I mean, I'm not good with the light stuff. I, I really can't deal with the light stuff. For me, if, if light comes out of a beer or I can see anything through it, that, then we got some problems. So this is, yeah, there we go. That is wow. just well, I think fantastic. You said, definitely have set a new standard for us on the show, Chris. You think it's, it's like Atlantic. you port wine. <laughs> That's good wow. stuff. Wow. Oh, All right, man, well, listen, that's good. with that, uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to our audience uh, so that they can see who you are uh, and learn a little bit about you, and then we'll go ahead and get uh, get into our discussions. Uh, yeah, Chris Roberts. Um, let's see, hacker, researcher, virtual CISO, and advisor to a number of different organizations uh, have, to your point, have been around the block for a long time. Um, I mean, let's face it, I think I started hacking stuff when I was 10 years old and like got arrested at 14. So, you know, we're going back a long way, a long, long way. So yeah, good fun. Bit. Well, uh, I know uh, Chris Jordan, you had uh, a couple of questions you wanted to start off with. I, I, I'm the Mr. Softball question kind of guy. No, I, <laughs> no, I, was, you know, I wanted to really just start because listen, I, I like to have that the, the dude kind of big Lebowski kind of view of the universe and be more positive, right? Go with the flow is, I mean, right now you're a perfect opportunity in your life to enjoy, right? The work. I mean, who wants to have a crappy job, right? So what is it that you find interesting right now in security where you say, oh, that's pretty cool. I, I wouldn't mind, well, if you're working for a living, it's who doesn't work less than 60 hours a week, right? You know, oh, yeah. Who, and, and if you really enjoy it, it doesn't feel like 60. I'll tell you. So, I mean, what, 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 what do you really find interesting right now? I mean, security is such a huge field. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's exponentially grown since, you know, since we first officially defined it as a field. Um, it's gone ridiculous. Um, 
I think for me, what I still find interesting is like the innovation and the future side of things. So, I mean, I've, I've always been, always, I've been relatively fortunate, even if it's not for my day job, for my evening work and my evening research side of the world, I've always tried to throw the crystal ball out a little bit further. You know, some of the stuff I'm working on and messing around with now is, you know, EEG monitoring. And so how can I pull certain signals out of the brain so that actually my computer, funnily enough, the one that's behind me over there, knows that I want a cup of tea and knows that I want biscuits and food before I do. So how is it learning the signals? And I've got it to a stage now where it recognizes multiple patterns of mine and it will actually record them. And then eventually when I get up for food, I'll actually check to see and some other things that I'm doing. So I'm basically, what I'm basically building with that one is a digital version of me. So a neural architecture, digital version of me. And so I'm taking some of that and obviously dropping that into the actual artificial intelligence community and going, how do we define intelligence now? How are we going to find it in five and 10 years time? And then, you know, with that stuff comes all of the embedded technology that we're putting into humans and what can we pull out and what can we put back in again from that side of it? So there's always, I mean, there's such a vast amount of fun stuff out there. It's, um, you know, and that's just one side. Obviously, I, I do a lot of stuff on the government and the military side of things. So there's always some interesting yeah. stuff on that side of the world. Yeah, we, 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 we dabble on our side. We dabble with AI every once in a while. I'll tell you, it's difficult to implement. I'm not trying to be negative. It's difficult to implement AI into security products because of speed. I, Right. I mean, because as well, yeah, it's we've we've done it a huge disservice, like a massive disservice. Um, and I, I put a LinkedIn post out about it, you know, today and we kind of ranted about it last night on on some stuff. And what I what frustrates me is what a lot of the business companies are calling AI is is nothing more than like a fuzzy algorithm. I mean, at best that they've got a neural architecture that learns and it's also narrow. It's a very, very single focused. It's like Watson, you know, everybody's like, Oh my gosh, Watson's amazing. You know what? Yeah, it can beat me at it can beat me at a game of chess. You ask it how to make me a cup of tea, stumped. Well, <laughs> but it's still the, the question of of speed and complexity and you go into like the AI algorithms and I'll, I'll agree with you on one side which is that I feel like machine learning when we say machine learning in our shop we don't consider it AI we you know when you look at TensorFlow and you look at a lot of the AI algorithms the modeling has been there since 1980 right I'm going to yes. do a Poisson curve I'm, this is the modeling this is my sampling and I'm generating the models and I'm doing a prediction is the next state within that model and a lot of the uh, unsupervised learning really it hasn't i know they want to say it advanced i've been watching this because of covid they, they mit put their classes online and the ai one you know they're talking about this new generation and, and it's it's not new right I, yeah. I don't feel like not in the direction of which you just brought up which is that if someone could model your brain um and we'll get into the privacy aspects of modeling your brain. Uh, <laughs> we we have privacy. It's a new concept. We'll, we'll, we'll jump into that one. Allegedly, I'm not to talk about privacy because that's one of my uh, pet peeves. Is uh, but in general, so 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 AI. You, go, you, you let's say you're reading your own brain waves right now. So are yeah. you? Do you like the hardware aspect, or are you a software guy? Uh, I'm both. Are you like Apple? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I tend to, so I actually bought a bunch of EEG headsets, uh, realized the limitations on some of them and then talked to a couple of very, very good friends of mine who are like crazy hardware people and got some really good ideas from them. I'm very fortunate. I, I've got an entire lab next to this lab that's got like hardware stuff in it. And so I end up building my own, it's a set of glasses that have four EEG monitors and some other stuff in them. And so I export those systems to a BLE network and that BLE architecture is hooked into there. I took some of the open source uh, EEG censoring system and just rebuilt some of the algorithms that I wanted. I export a two-dimensional map out, wrap it into a three-dimensional architecture, and then I'm using that with like a derivative. So, you know, you're never going to get 100% because I'm squirreling at the same time but I can get to within an 85th, 90th percentile on a lot of times. And I can use a 3D model with just a derivative of how far off of the percentile I want that then tells me, hey, my brain is currently thinking of bourbon biscuits or a cup of tea. And so there's some interesting stuff I'm messing around with. Listen, I, I keep on going back to they're mimicking my brain. 
the computer will be really good until it gets to differential equations, and then they're going to suck, right? <laughs> I, I, I got a D in different DQs. I, I was the guy it was a Brazilian. I could barely understand him. I'm happy I passed the class. I got my D, and I'm like, it's not a prereq for anything. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that but the poor computer is it, mimicking me is not going to be a good winning situation. How about you, Jeremy? Well, so Chris, you said that uh, AI is very immature, or you're alluding to AI being a little bit immature. I, I think both of us. Both Chris so I think uh, to me, so uh, a wide version of AI is is has got a lot of maturity issues. But if you look at a very narrow focus, so I mean, you've got two ways of looking at AI. You have an intelligent system that doesn't necessarily think like us because that's not what we need. We actually need something to think better than us. You get into this whole issue of how it's coded, who coded it, what biases that intelligent system has. But a narrow AI focused architecture or machine learning, a well set of machine learning algorithms, I think are very, very effective. I and mean, we see that in SOAR technology, you know, from your standpoint, from the MSSP, mm -hmm. there's so much data coming in. How do you make sense of it? an algorithmic architecture that is able to learn A plus B, actual equals C, D, and E in these circumstances, and it doesn't in these ones, that's great. I think it's perfect. Um, I think that's a really good way of looking at it. I do feel so like- So as a whole, the industry, the security industry is embracing use of narrow AIs and, and focused implementations for things like Silence and like CrowdStrike mm -hmm. and these kinds of tools, right? Yeah. Is there are there any of the are there any security products on the market that are making use of a wider but, AI? But, but but Chris, before we go before we go into it, Jeremy, the here's one of the things you just brought up. So if you bring up Silence, you bring up Vectra, you bring up a lot of the guys <laughs> that will put AI on their website. Oh, the boy. AI they're talking about is for analysis of data in the lab, right? You're not running tensor uh, on a laner box with a four core, you know, system. It's not happening. What they're doing is they're writing signatures and they're taking those vectors, right? That's where the company name comes from. And they're putting that vector into the product. That's the result of the AI. But the AI itself isn't running on any perimeter, right? And the same thing with Silence. The concept of AI in Silence is to analyze. It's like Gary Hoglund's digital DNA. I think Gary, doesn't get enough credit. He basically with digital DNA back in, in I want to say 2002, he really pushed the concept that using AI in natural language processing in terms of the split of a piece of code would allow me to determine sections of code that are bad and call that malicious. Yeah. And, and, and that was literally what Silence did 20 years later. And, and if, if you really wanted to embrace it, Gary was way ahead of the curve. Right. Uh, and that, I think that, so again, this comes back to, to why, you know, I literally, I'm, I'm hanging out with the Calypso AI guys. It's because you have companies, and, and I, I believe me, I already took a blowtorch to several of them last night. Um, and, and we, we took Dark Trace, we raked them over the coals heavily. Because, I mean, they're sitting there and they've got world-leading AI, and I'm like, no, you haven't. What you've got is a very narrow focused architecture that has the ability to take A plus B plus C and possibly make D, E, and F. So, you know, you have some maybe a cognitive architecture, but it's a very, again, it's a very narrow cognitive, maybe somewhat predictive, but it's predictive around certain pieces of input. It's not going to be able to make its own decisions or its own mind up on certain things. Um, I mean, okay, so, it, and so this is what I'm, this is with the Calypso folks. It's like, okay, if we're building a true intelligent system, how do we measure it? How could we measure the intelligent behavior? How do we measure its ability to learn? It's improvisation. This is the big one. If I don't have information coming in over here, what can I derive from that? How can I deal with it? How can I do with it? The collaboration capability. Again, if you look at an intelligent system, especially something that's not narrow, part of that comes into uh, collaboration capabilities. Um, if I don't know something, where can I go find it out without looking it up on Google? How do I collaborate effectively? And then the nuances, I mean, mm -hmm. the human nuances, some of the crazy shit that I'm working on here with human nuances. 
I mean, that stuff is, we're way out there. And there's another company I'm working with in the healthcare space where we're looking at human language nuances. And I mean, that's, that's a whole other ball of wax. And we ran into this with threat intelligence. So part of my background is building threat intel platforms, both inside agencies and back outside. And the 25 different ways that you can refer to hacking something, let alone the 10 different ways you'll talk about, you know, I, the, the example we always used was I'm hacked off with IBM that would trigger in 15 out of 20 different systems as, Oh, this is a bad thing. You hacked off with IBM. Who gives a shit? Everybody's hacked off with IBM today because maybe they didn't do something hacked into IBM. That's a different thing. But if I take that word hacked and I substitute it with 10 other things, or I take IBM and I substitute it with several other things, how can you vary and how can you contextualize what that sentence is and what can you do with it? That's where we're missing so much of the issue. That's where we're missing so many pieces of the puzzle. So, so going back to Jeremy's question then, are, are you seeing any leading edge companies today who are moving slightly out of that narrow towards the wider AI perspective? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a couple. I mean, you've, you've got to look, I hate to say it, you've got to look at what the, the guys over at Google are doing and, and obviously the, the, our, our resident loony bin, uh, Elon, and what he's up to these days. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we won't even go there on that one. Hey, he's coming to Texas, I hear. You. <laughs> <laughs> God help us. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's an entirely different subject. Um, You've got to look at some of the stuff they're doing, and they are definitely starting to push those barriers. Uh, some of the stuff that's coming out of like DARPA, DARPA is doing some amazing stuff. Um, we had the machine on machine stuff uh, a couple of years ago out of DEF CON when it was um, the Grand Cyber Challenge. That was had gorgeous, it, wasn't it, when they put that on stage? Oh, I had no, such so, a fantastic time with that. Actually, I mean, I was D really D lucky. He had a Woody for that one. That was that was probably his shining <laughs> moment for Death on that year. I, I've got one of the coins. I got the challenge coin from it. And oh. yeah, I got I got to hang out and do some fun stuff. All kudos to a couple of good friends of mine. Nice. So you start, you go back to where that was, and then you start going, okay, here's where we've taken it further. And what DARPA is doing with some of the... Uh, just trying to think what I'm allowed to say. What DARPA is doing with some of their research You're universities. You're allowed to say it all, Chris. You can say it all. If you we'll edit it out. It, yeah, there we go. We can edit it they out. Would, they wouldn't really tell you anything classified. Just spit the it out. The feds know where I live. I mean, they come by the house about once a year on average at the moment. So oh, I mean, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really worry me that much. So do you treat them to some of that, that fine whiskey I understand that you have? <sighs> Don't tempt me. Don't yeah, we're going to talk about those 500, 600 bottles you have. Um, now, are you a gold spot kind of guy, or do you like writer's tears? Or are you actually are you writer's tears is actually rather fantastic. I really I like writer's, writer's tears. tears as a baseline, just a regular, normal, like everyday one. Writer's tears is nice. Every um, day, yep. but, <laughs> yeah, but it is great. No, the writer's tears. Yeah. That's that's my probably my penitential. I like that over gold. But every once in a while, you know, TV and stuff come out with a, a, a limited that's pretty nice. Have you, um, so if you like the yellow spot and green spot stuff, have you managed to get your hands on any of the red spot that they came out with? No, no, I'm right. Oh, you got to you got to hunt for one of those. They're, oh gosh, I, I might get lambasted for, I think it's a 15 year old or something like 15 or an 18, I think it was a 15 year old. Um, the, absolutely beautiful, just Yeah, because fantastic. the gold spot is, 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 is quite excellent. But yeah. like you, writer's tears by far, and, you know, you, you do them side by side, the writer's tier, I don't know how they can be so consistent. They're, they're just it's, amazing. It's gorgeous. The pot stills, Sorry. like the tall pot stills are absolutely fantastic. I, I have a lot of love for those. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go into that one. But, but yeah, hey, you back, back to, so, so, so you bring up AI. Before we leave yeah. AI, well, we're not going to leave AI, I don't think, but <laughs> singularity. Ooh. Go into, <laughs> if you're an AI guy, you're going to say singularity. So go no, into, I'm actually not. I don't really? want it. Fuck it. I do not want the Borg. So you want to reset? You, you're, you're a guy that says, when we get to this point, let's hit the reset button. No. Put it back. No. This is why I'm building my machine. I am absolutely, I, I am, as, it's uh. going to sound crazy. So I'm, my, the, I'm actually messing around. I have every freaking intention of somehow or other, I've got, I don't know how many more years I've got left on this planet. Whatever I've got left on this planet. As long as you but make 2045, you should be okay for the singularity. I, I actually don't want that. What I really, really want to be able to do is build the digital version of me. 
drop it into an AS400 somewhere in New Zealand and then go to town and have fun. I still would like the individuality. I, st I don't want to upload myself to a singularity. I'm, what I literally want to do is make a digital version of me that has the consciousness, that has the capability for reason, that has the morality, that has the personality, and that has all those necessary components that we perceive as human. Now, yeah. if you start looking at all the other things that do not make us... Uh, you, this is where it gets really interesting. You get into you get into the 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 what is a human, what is a soul, what makes us human, all that kind of crazy stuff. For me, it's like, look, I'm a bunch of electrons. I'm held together by something we don't actually fundamentally understand. If you take that out, I weigh like 0.1 percent of what I actually weigh. So we'll have fun with that one. But if I can You're turn a Star Trek back, guy over Star Wars. Ooh, that's oh, what I'm that's hearing. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I, you know, I, you know, I have, take the baby, take baby Yoda out of it, because that's oh, not I, fair. It's uh, not fair if you throw baby Yoda in. It. Can we also get rid of that stupid freaking Jar -Jar? damn long-eared Jar Jar? Jar Jar, that thing you know, needs to be. Anytime you say baby Yoda, you're gonna bring up Jar Jar. It's like, you know what? For every genius move, there yeah. is an opposite reaction, and that's Jar Jar. And those stupid <laughs> penguins, and whatever those action, stupid gray and brown penguin things were that needed also to end up on Sunday dinner table. So, Jeremy, what are your thoughts on that that uh, singularity? <laughs> wow, I don't think the world is ready for me to be a robot or to have my my uh, my personality and my intellect uploaded. I think that. That's but that's a recipe that, for a disaster. More than that, the singularity gets to a point that you realize that your the human brain is incomprehend can't comprehend to a certain point, mm -hmm. right? So at one point you're gonna have to start trusting AIs to actually compute something you can't, right? To understand oh. something you cannot. That wasn't you'll Stephen never Hawking. be able to. Stephen yeah. Hawking said, "Don't go there." Well, no, no, no. He didn't say don't go there. Yeah. No, 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 no. What Stephen, Hall, I, what Stephen actually said was we will go there and we don't know if it's going to be good or bad for us. We just yeah, I mean, don't to, know. There's people that say, you know, when you hit the singularity, why don't we just hit reset? Let's just start with, with you know, Flint and, and Rock and start all over again because his, at that his, point there, we've hit the apex of what a human can do. No, 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 no. See, this is where it gets really – so the, here's, yeah, here's the logic. Okay. Here's the logic for this. Think about it this way. Okay, if, if, we, if we ignore all of the, the deities and everything else out there that we've been told, if you look at the human being as a simple set of instructions, ones and zeros, if we can break us down to a simple set of ones and zeros, and I can drop basically what's me into one of those or an AS400, imagine what you can then do. Imagine the capabilities. What can we now do with transmitting ones and zeros? We're not bound by the human body. Screw the human body. This thing's going to last me a hundred years. Yeah, you're talking about the, the, the movement of, of human souls. And, and, and it's a fascinating topic, really. Oh, I mean, it totally. is It is a fascinating. And, and I'm not afraid of the singularity. In fact, I think I kind of embrace it, not for me to be in a machine, but embracing the concept of computation and knowledge at such a level. Yeah. By which we, sure. can, we can be the idea of men. We don't have to be the guys doing it anymore. <laughs> Right. Well, it's, I mean, we're, we're heading that way. I mean, back to your point, we're, we're either, we've got, we've got only, as humans, we've got a few options. One, we're going to go off the edge of the cliff because let's be honest, we're not good to each other. we have sure as hell aren't good to the planet. We really don't take care of, of anything very effectively. So we're kind of going off the edge of the cliff at a pretty decent speed at the moment. If you look at the options that we have, we are going to either continue to augment ourselves we already see a level of augmentation coming. We see a level of augmentation on the horizon. And that's just going to continue to be more and more effective over the next you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. We have that option to go that route. And then we have to start taking a look at you know, what resources we're drawing, not drawing, and all that stuff. The singularity is definitely another route. You know, do we basically end up digitizing ourselves? At which point, why do we need the squishy body? It goes away. Have a nice day. Well, then um, we're into the matrix world, right? That, that people postulate that we're already living in. You know, oh, you're, yeah. putting on, you're putting on <laughs> ego versus intelligence. Intelligence is just intelligence, right? You have to understand that, that we, we often want to personify intelligence, but intelligence itself is just that. Exactly. It is, again, ones and zeros. Right. 
And that's what I love it. What I'm interested to see is what happens to the population. I mean, you think about it again. We have four and a half billion people that have access to computing power at the moment. You know, it's increasing per year and all this stuff. But you, will we end up with a separation of haves and have-nots? You know, not necessarily matrix-esque, but will you end up with a set of people? You know, we've had cryo-freezing for a countless amount of years, and that's for the exclusives. Will we literally end up with a potential for, hey, you know, you've got to the end of your natural life or you've done it. You're in the computer. By the way, you, you know, you don't have enough money. You're not I the right cast. That that's, yeah. that's the sequel to Redmi. What is it? Uh, the Fall? Is that, the, is that the next one? I didn't finish it. I'm like halfway through and I kind of got bored. But <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the afterlife isn't that boring. Um, <laughs> that was painful. So, 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 so to kind of reel it back in though, so because sci-fi is a fascinating topic, right? And yeah. we're really talking about is true science fiction, not science fantasy. Right. So oh, yeah. We have this conversation. Yeah. So normally in this type of platform, right, you can extrapolate ideas and concepts and say what does that value mean yeah so let's go back to i, I was going to avoid my pet peeve but i think it's a good pet peeve to bring up at this point here privacy mm -hmm. right so now you have this and somebody's going to write a book about this one day right what is the privacy rules of the digitalization in other words alice probably knows where i'm going to go with this my belief is that a person has a right and should own their own identity, right? Mm -hmm. in, in the United States, that's not true. Every time we write a privacy law, it's about protecting data. That's absolutely nothing but the ownership of your identity. You don't even own your DNA when you give a blood sample. It's that pathetic. In, in, in the GDPR, they actually state that the, 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 the identity is owned by that person. And that's one yep. thing our Congress is incapable. I don't care if you love Nancy Pelosi or not, our Congress sucks. But did they're I, incapable did, of understanding did the this CCPA concept. try to come close to that, though? No, the CCPA is no. about how do you protect the, the privacy of the data of the individual and the yep. click through. And it's, it, listen, if you're a small business, we're a small business. We can we can ignore the CCPA, yep. right? If you make less than fifty million dollars a year, you have less than five hundred employees for the most part. You can ignore the CCPA mm -hmm. as long as you're not selling your data to, to Google. Yeah, I gotta go because I, I I'm on my second. Beer no, you're on. No, no, you're rules. you're you are so 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 oh, on it, track. It, it, it's just like what I read today, and and I found that disgusting is that the the privacy of people who are downloading this COVID tracking app in North Dakota, they're selling the people's data to third parties yep. or giving it to them. Tracking where they are so marketing companies can go, oh, you were just by Macy's. Let me make you an offer for Macy's. You don't need to. You just zap into his brain. Chris is already working on zapping the brain. You can walk by and say, you know what? He's not a Starbucks customer, but he's hot and us. Right? I mean, <laughs> totally. So, so I, yeah. I, I know you share a lot of these beliefs on privacy, but go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Please. No, I mean, you totally, totally, totally right. And this is, I mean, we're not doing it, but the potential is there in the mid to near future of, you know, you go through the airport scanner. It's going to take a look and see, really, what are your motives? And, and at that point, is it allowed to? Should it do it? What's the rules? What's the, what's the concerns? And, and it really is that privacy versus safety thing. And a perfect example, I mean, um, I, was out in, uh, I was out in the UK when the Manchester issue hit. And got a phone call from some folks over here going, you're out there, um, get your ass up and help them. And so headed up there. And I mean, it took me yeah, a couple of hours to get up there. And by the time I was up there, they'd already pulled all the CCTV cameras from everywhere they need to. They'd already sent door knocking teams out and they'd gotten this set further because the UK definitely has much more of a surveillance nation type of mentality. Is that an invasion of privacy? <laughs> There's an argument to say yes. Did it help in a situation? Absolutely, it helped in a situation to identify and do all the stuff they were necessary. Is that right? I don't know. And then this comes down to, you know, uh, it's tough because there is a part of me that wants to hold on to what I am as a human being, um, be that in a digital form or be that in a, in a physical form. 
But with that comes certain responsibilities. How do I manage myself? How do I look after myself? And, and let's be honest, out of the, you know, if we take the US population out of, you know, 350 million people, I'm not sure I trust that many people to look after themselves in this country alone, let alone you start spreading it across the rest of the world. I, I just, we haven't given people good enough capabilities to look after themselves. I think that's part of the problem. We haven't educated them as to why they need to effectively. We haven't really given them the tools they need to do it. And unfortunately, you know, to all the points, uh, you know, not just Congress, but capitalism, corporate and all the other stuff have gone, well, I need that information to be able to maximize my profitability, to be able to sell to you and, and, and 101 other reasons. And you're right. We don't own our own identity. We yeah, might yeah, own yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, data around it. Really it goes down to, something I've been saying forever is it's always, it's profits before people. Yeah. Always. Well, capital is an economy. Listen, you can talk about every model has a fault, right? Yeah. But let's, let's go back to the concept of privacy and ownership because I think it's important is that if I generate an artificial intelligent model, yep. like Chris Roberts, can I copyright it? Can I take it and call it me? Yeah, you probably right? could do that's at the moment. Yeah. Argument because all I did was take all his behavioral analysis and all I did was do a, you know, analyze his brain waves and duplicated them, but it's not him. Yep. It's not his soul. It's just his ones and zeros. It's, so it's the old Gilbert thing. It wasn't pornography. It was ones and zeros. Yeah. Here's a, so here's an interesting thing. And I, I, this is a fun topic and it, and it really cuts to the core. Um, and I have this debate with my daughter on a regular basis. As a capitalistic society, we will never put the human first. If we were to be, and this is where, and I have fun with this because again, I, yeah. you know, we're drinking red blooded American alcohol and all this kind of good stuff. We could Communism. be drinking Irish alcohol, but go on. That is true. Communism. <laughs> Communism. If you were to take at just an absolute not what communism has become because of animal farm and because of humans, but if you were to take for the people, by the people, and we were all here for each other, doing everything for each other, be it a kibbutz type of thing, or be it a communism kind of thing, or anything even like that, or even what the original constitution was meant to be for, for the people, by the people, and all this kind of good stuff. If we were to take that and take the human out of it, we'd be in good shape because we would care about each other and we would do the right things for each other. You know, so, you bring up an interesting point. I mean, and Jeremy has to give me the, the signal he wants to talk. So I was always thinking in this conversation, it's a good, great conversation to have, right? Is, yeah. you know, what, how do we, tr you know, you brought up a conversation. I, I, I actually did my research on you before, and I, I'm sorry. I actually listened I, to a bunch to, of you. To whatever time. research you, if, if it's out there, it's fair game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. how do we, how, I don't even know how to say it anymore. I mean, you have to edit this out one time is, is, is how do we train a person and people in general, right? To be good people because security, if you want to go back to our conversation at AI and everything we're talking about security works when we care about each other, like Spock, right? We care yes. about yeah. the group and we care about each other. And really what we don't like in this universe is self-centered people who care about themselves before they care about the people next to them, to include their children, yeah. right? Uh, that, that's the greatest evil of the universe. And so, I mean... We have, we have one job. As security professionals, we have one job and one job only and it's simply to protect the charges that we are responsible for that's it that's all we should be doing now do we need to make enough money to put food on the table absolutely do we need to make enough to put a roof over our heads put kids through college absolutely do we need to be minting millionaires and billionaires on a weekly basis on the backs of everything else i'm, I'm gonna say probably not I, I, don't, I don't care if George George Kurtz is riding in an F1 car right now, but <laughs> it's he's a good guy, and I guess what I'm, I, I love people. I mean, I think yeah. that to tell you the truth, that in general, I don't think people are evil. Don't people don't wake up saying, you know, Hitler had it wrong. I can be better than Hitler. 
right? You know, I mean, I don't think people are thinking I want to be evil. You, you, right? you remind me, Chris, of, of uh, in, in Chris Roberts, forgive me for bringing this up, but Chris recently did what I refer to as an angel hero moment. Oh, and no, no. I just, I had Snapchat. <laughs> but there was a desperate situation where a minor ran off with an adult. And he was able to take, because of the lack of privacy controls that are out there, and figure out how to track where she was, when she was, so that they could go intercede and save her. Yeah, and, 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 and now, you know, you bring up a really an interesting point around privacy. I told you, I'm a huge privacy advocate. I have problems with EFF because they're not about privacy. I, I feel that privacy and accountability are the same coin. That a person should still be accountable for their actions, and therefore they have the right to their privacy. Right. But if you're going to do things or say things that are damaging to other people, you've lost your right to privacy. If you're going to be a network troll and you're going to be a bully, if you're going to be going on LinkedIn and Facebook and destroying presidential elections, you have lost your privacy, right? Because you don't want to be accountable for who you are. Is the chat. So two questions on that one. Hmm. Who gets to make that decision? Who watches the watchers? Great. Exactly. Exactly. Great that's, comic. That's that's where it's that's where it's really that's where I would love to have an intelligent system, in some ways not necessarily overseeing us, but in some ways oh. relatively hey, arbitrary. A, there you go. So I've been trying to figure out where you should land. That is the company. You need to create the watchers. Ooh, that's uh, such a dangerous position. <laughs> oh, you don't want me in charge of that. You do not want me. No. I don't like humans. I really, I'm, I just. Maybe I, that's I, what we need. <laughs> there's, there's, there's too much power when you're playing God, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, humans are corruptible, whether it be financially yeah. or whatever. And we all yeah. have a price. We yeah. all have. I, I, I did a post on this. I, I did something on this the other week. I mean, we all have a price. I know exactly what mine is. I am acutely aware of exactly what my price is. And it's it's a chunk of change, but it also means I would get rid of the uh, get rid of the, the the challenges I have with my ex. It would mean there'd be a Ferrari F forty and a few other things in the driveway. And you know, I, my price is way out there, and it's kind of deliberate because nobody's ever going to pick up the tab for it. But it, it we all have our price. It might be my kids. If somebody puts a gun to the head of my daughter, I'm done. What do you need? Yeah, I agree 100 yeah. percent on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let Jeremy me, says the same thing. And he, what about your dog? I heard you had a Great Dane. Now, is the dog included in the kid level? Oh, <laughs> probably not far off of it. Actually, you know what? My, uh, quite honestly, yeah. Quite uh, honestly, quite honestly, Milo definitely Daisy to some degree, but Milo, yeah. I mean, I because of some shit I went through <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, at the Milo level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> shoot on the dog so, so i Jerry, um i wouldn't be here i yeah. would not be here if it wasn't for those dogs because of some of the shit last year i just, i wouldn't be here but I'm so the, you before, before al because he's gonna interrupt i want to hold you accountable accountable one level i mean you definitely have a passion for this do you think you have a career in it do you think you can find a place that really cares about this crap has any is anybody ever come close to offer you anything interesting like this? Yeah, actually, yeah. You know what? The government side of the world. A okay. couple of the couple of the agencies. There's a couple much of folks. Much not there anymore. Much less DARPA. Who's who's I, over that's tantalizing? That's that's the problem. I mean, they they've missed it. I mean, they're missing some amazing people. There's yeah, he's he was I missed a, when he left. Oh, my, you and I both on that one. Yeah. There's um there's a couple of folks. A uh, perfect example would be like uh. Some of the folks with like SOCOM and JSOC and some of those folks. Wow. I have, I've done, I do some stuff with, with some of those teams. I have a lot of love for those guys. One, because you're going to give priests a call and you're going to say priest, man, pull me <laughs> out on this one. Cause I know priest knows contacts over there. He's a yeah. guy. I'm doing a few things with a few folks and <laughs> I have a lot of love for those one, because that's family to me. But yeah. secondly, for all the crazy shit that they do, I would argue they get the short end of the straw 
because you get these big ass freaking conglomerates that come in and take a four year contract, spend three years not really doing very much, deliver a little bit in year four that's less than the stuff that we have in the commercial world, and then expect these guys to drop into any fucking zone known to mankind and protect us. I'm like, yeah, that shit's got to stop. I agree. You're, you're gonna you're gonna figure out this the AI piece way before you figure out that piece. That, that I'm, I'm actually working a little bit on. Yeah, we'll we'll have that conversation. Okay. There's a little bit of that coming together. <laughs> all right, Jeremy. What are you gonna say now? I'm already done with all my beers. I've got like yeah, I am too. Backwash. I'm, I'm still. I'm enjoy, I'm see, this is why uh, this is this is why you need the good heavy stuff. I love the hey. You know what? When you brought this up, all I could think about was. He's going to bring a Samuel Smith oatmeal stout. That's what I was thinking. When you're, going to, you're going to bring the tinfoil out, and you're going to pop one of those. I got, I got, some, porter. I got a few more of those. There's some yeah. amazing stuff that um, – oh, what the hell are they called? Bo- uh, they're, they're out in New York. They do. It's called Black Ops. It's, a, it's just beautiful stuff. Um, we're talking alcohol, right? Black Ops? Yeah, we're talking alcohol. Black Ops, alcohol. Yeah, there we go. How many is that alcohol? Yeah. So, so, so what I was going to ask, Jeremy, you know, in this whole discussion of privacy, Chris, as you now are doing virtual CISO for MSSBs, the, what's, what are you seeing from the diverse customer set? And I know that you guys probably handle from single individuals who are high profile all the way up to big companies, right? And talk a little bit about that privacy. Okay, on this one. We're get another beer. And that, uh, that both you guys actually are seeing there. Jeremy, you go first. You hit this Pri- first. I'll follow. It's, uh, privacy is, as a topic, not something that people completely understand or appreciate. I think that's the first fundamental flaw in privacy is not only people not, not understand the lack of privacy that they have, but they don't really understand it as a concept and how it applies to them digitally or, expect, or in within their business. The, most, of the, most companies are concerned about privacy policies, as a, and, but not necessarily about ensuring the privacy of their data or ensuring the privacy of their, their, their employee data and their employee information. We, we see for like for the, some of the higher end individual support that we do, it's definitely, we put a lot of effort into looking at their digital footprint and what their exposure is. Right. Um, we find that, you know, if we're doing celebrity protection, we find a lot of opportunity. We find a lot of what's called remoras, right. Where you have these, these, fakers who are feeding off of the the person and they don't really understand what the, the the impact of that is um and then you have companies who just they don't uh, don't understand the impact that l- lack cyber security has and the impact of the exposure of their data to the public world what is the impact to their company what is the impact to their customer? Um, not, not just degrading the credibility of the company because of a breach, but what is the exposure to your consumers? Not, not your shareholders, but your consumers. What happened? Okay. Yeah, it, it reminds me of a story that I read yesterday about this law firm who just got ransomware recently <laughs> in New York, right? And big yeah. celebrities data is now being exposed because they've, they've taken the extra step before they encrypt it. They're going to download it. Right. Yep. Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, you know, it's funny. I, I've been luckily lucky enough. Maybe that's not the right word lucky enough, to have, you know, uncovered a few different variants of ransomware and the extortionware is not something that is, hasn't been already built into the ransomware itself. It's just now it's becoming That's more prevalent. Yeah, They've always made a copy of your data, yeah. always, 100%. It's just now that they're, they're using it to extort, you know, for, for different reasons, for political, geopolitical reasons or whatever. Yeah. Well, purpose has changed. I mean, you know, the, our days, when I say our days, I'm talking old people, you know, it was different, <laughs> right? We were, we were more interested in like, I mean, when Shockwave Rider tried to do things, I mean, it was more... I could say negotiation. 
yeah. of image. Um, it's, it's, I think criminal is more criminal now. I mean, I think that there's so much money in our industry that it's, it's much more uh, mean to tell you the truth. This is, this is more violent from a, from a fight kind of perspective than I was sure. when I first started. I mean, before it was all about, you know, when nutrition used to change the web pages. I mean, I used to love going to DEF CON and seeing, you know, <laughs> the, the nutrition people speak, uh, it was in Jericho and stuff like that. And to talk about, I don't know where he is anymore. And now it's mean. Now security and, and what's happening is. It's a business. That's it's why business. it's gone 100%. from, it's gone from doing it for the hell of it. I mean, I remember coding some early, some early fun stuff where we make the hard drive spin, we make the screen go around the washing machine virus that we put out years and years ago and just stuff like that. I remember building those and having fun with those. And, and it was, we did it cause it was fun to do, you know, uh, yes, there was other things we were doing at the same time, yada, yada, yada. But now, I mean, it's a business. I, it's, it's we're going to do a talk probably in a couple of weeks time. Um, we're actually going to talk about ethics uh, and, and morals because you know, I look at it on a regular basis. You know, Brett Johnson's another one. I, I have a huge amount of love and respect for him um, because he you know, he was on that side with Shadow Crew and the other stuff, and we ran across each other back in those days. You know, he got he, he got yelled at a few times, and now he's out there going, look, this, this was my world. Learn from me. Learn to understand this. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, because I think we as humans, we don't get physically hurt by it. Mentally, we get hurt, credit rating goes down, identity gets lost, all those other things. But nobody physically shoots at us. Nobody's physically harming us. Today. We, yeah, today. Nobody's yeah. what we call in our world kinetic. Yeah, it, there we go. It's not, yeah, there we go. I, mean, I was trying to keep it all civilized and civilian, let's face it. But it was, but you're right, today, and we had that discussion. Um, yep. But because we don't physically feel it, we can't easily relate to it. It really is that separation between the physical and the digital world that it's hard for us to relate to. So again, as an attacker and as an adversary, taking money from you, who cares? You know, it, there, there's, no, there's no real consequence. And I'll come back every six, 12 months and take more from you if you haven't learned. Exactly. Now, it was interesting mm -hmm. to talk about ethics, right? Last year, and again, the, the thing about the security business is I continue to learn every day new things and, and ways people are doing stuff, but children and, yeah. and, and I'm dare I say maybe as low as elementary school, but at least, you know, secondary level of that, but they are now dropping five, 10 bucks on the web and buying DDoS attacks. Against 45 the to 50. Come on. It's not five, 10 bucks, 45 to 50 to do whatever what it is. <laughs> but the whatever. A DDoS to right? school. Go yeah, shut the whole system down. Who wants yeah. to play take, take a test? I, I, I don't want to take my test today. <laughs> I, I would be, I would have been one. Of, I would have been one of those selling the services back then as a kid. I gotta be honest. I set the freaking server but, up. I'd be flogging it to all my friends. I'm bugging so, if I want to take another test. So, so I know because I've opened. I cheated. I opened up a third beer on this one. <laughs> so, so, so I, I think with it's fascinating, Chris. I mean, this we could have a really long. We gotta, we gotta have another conversation. You brought up ethics and morals. Yeah. And, and let's talk about the days we threw soap in the swimming pool and, and put concrete in the Lexus Park, you know, toilets, right? That, that it then we weren't being, our ethics and morals, we, we weren't, our compass wasn't so freaking bad as they are nowadays, right? That, yeah. that we were not necessarily ethical or moral, but we weren't mean. Right? I mean, yeah. there's no, I, I understand the switch in the men's room and the women's room pieces of plastic oh, aren't exactly that the and best trying to, thing to that do. And trying to sneak sheep in, getting caught breaking into the zoo, stealing road <laughs> signs, getting banned from the Luxor yeah. for 10 years. I'm so, still banned so, from the Venetian. Talk to, talk to Mudge about my and Mudge's running with, with um, Mike Tyson one day. Oh, shoot. So, <laughs> we, we met him at a experiment rhino one night. Um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point is, is that, that our moral compasses weren't as askew. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, that, that you, you brought up AI, you brought up intelligence. 
yeah. you know, now you bring up morality and that's a tough one. Morality is, listen, I, I mean, people might not like religion. I love religion. I think religion is necessary, but morality mis- is an interesting concept. It was mischievous, not malicious. I, I think that's <laughs> probably the, I was just trying to figure out the right words. Do no we, harm. I mean, it's like the yeah. doctor, right? Do no well, harm. Well, that's it. It was do no harm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that I, Definitely, I could have all sorts of things leveled against me by far and away. I know two ways about it. But anything I have done in the civilian world has been done for basically going, okay, look, there's there's issues, there's challenges. How do I raise awareness? How do we get people to think? How do we how do we how do we educate? How do we do something? It's never for I'm gonna break this and I'm gonna hold it for ransom, I'm gonna make profit from this. It's like look, you've got problems, you've got problems, you're not listening. Screw it. I'm just gonna show you you got problems. Yeah, but it's not even a problem, right? Like you're talking about taking a look at your own brain waves and put them on a computer. Yeah. People would say, Chris, is that a hacker? Maybe. Sure. Is it, is it, it, oh, I've inquisitive. got other things. Le- I mean, I've got other things leveled against me. Let's be perfectly honest. I mean, taking out aviation systems and ships and NASA satellites and countries. I still have a botnet running over in Africa that's basically on a large number into the seven figures of computers. It's there for pure altruism because a lot of those computers can't take care of themselves. So they're infected. They run into a bunch of CNCs. And all it's doing is it's stopping those computers from being infected by anything else. You were, That's you were around during the cheese whiz virus, right? Where that guy wrote a virus that actually patched the vulnerability. Yes, exactly. Which right. is, and you've got to be careful doing that because again, you can do that to individual computers mostly. You put that in an enterprise, you'll break half the freaking end. You do that to anything in the healthcare, you'll likely kill more people than fix more problems. Yeah, so, that's, a, that's great. Yeah, you got to be Frank really... Jeremy, give me the... You're, you're thinking, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm just... I, I, I'm, I'm, I've got beard envy. Yeah, I know you have beard envy. <laughs> he's, got the, I, I, he's got the COVID-19 beard issue. Like, I've got, got the COVID-19 uh, haircut. This is... Yeah, this eye. is the... I haven't colored it in a while. And then this is... I mean, this is just nuts now. This has actually made its way into the beard. It's kind of fun. And then wow. the sides, the side, the sides are just. I mean, the sides are like out here. Now. Listen, I, I watched MythBuster, and what I found is, is that all that beard stuff prevents you from sneezing and getting other people infected. So you just <laughs> they call it a personal mask, right? You don't yeah. have to put a mask on. That's it. It's right? like no, you got to shove it up and it's like a baby mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I can oh, say that man. once in my lifetime I did let my beard grow out, so I, I understand. Oh that. my God! Don't don't no, make him no, show no, you no. pictures of that, Chris. I'm not oh, that's awesome! That. That's Please. awesome. We want to see those pictures. Oh my God! It looks like a horror film, Santa Claus. It does. <laughs> oh yes! Please, please. <laughs> Listen, yes. no no haircut for basically uh, eight months, and no shaving the beard for eight months. Oh, His wife awesome. went to sleep just shaking a fear every night with that kind oh, of. Look. No, she kept yeah. threatening to cut it off when I was sleeping. Oh, that's funny. Chris, how long have you been growing your? How long have you been growing the? Uh, so this the beard? this I've had for years. This this yeah. I've had for 10, 10, 12 years or so. The sides, like all the side stuff, and on all this kind of craziness, um, I started that after RSA last year. So that's been growing. Okay. All the side stuff has been growing for maybe you know, a year and change. So um, you have prodigious follicle growth. That's amazing. Oh, it's I, the problem is though this this will only really get to about this length. It's got a finite length on it, um, and it will really should get to this length. So my hair when I came out of the military. I grew my hair. I mean, we were allowed to have long hair anyway because of some of the stuff that we did. But my hair was always down to there. I grew my hair down to like here, and then it wouldn't get any longer. Like so I ended up oh, just wow. straight off. Wow. Yeah. So for the you know, you for the never say that part that that clause. You, you there's only one group in the military allowed to grow their hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so for the for the random person who stumbles upon this and goes, "Wow, beard envy." What is your beard care regimen? Uh, it gets washed. I, I mean, literally in the morning, I just dunk it in the water. I shovel it. And then when I'm not doing anything else, I put beard. I, I've got like a beard salve that goes in it if I remember. And it literally is if I remember. I was just about to write a, a million what? ways to die in the West. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but they, yeah. they do the whole beard mustache thing. And yeah. All oh, God. Thing. Yeah. The whole. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a couple of different products. There's a. Uh, 
there's like an Amish, uh, there's a couple of different projects. There's like a hillbilly salve and some stuff. I've just got a couple. It just basically gets thrown in and hope for the best. Yeah, right uh, on. Well, Jeremy, I got chili and stuff to, to, to finish it. I got to I gotta feed kids. Um, you got cornbread to bake, don't you? Ooh. No, the girl I baked it. It's, it's actually came to the oh, point. Casey's man. awesome. So you, homemade cornbread. so you can start, it's starting to waft its way into your office mm. and you're... Uh, I just feel guilty because, because uh, even though... You're, I you're done drinking. with the conversation now because you're hungry. I keep on drinking. <laughs> I had... Yeah, now, now he's on his third beer and it's like, <laughs> I've got to have food. <laughs> I, I cheated this time. Like, I'm really good about not going for the third beer, but I tell you, I had a hard time waiting for this, this call to even start. It's a Friday. I, I, I was ready to drink like... Hours this ago. is about as much as I can drink at the moment because I've got a. I'm driving in about four hours time, so okay. I've kind of like had my. I've had my glass, um, four or five hours, and I got to head out and go do some stuff. Wow, wow. See, good man. Responsibility. See, I, yeah. Ethics. Yeah. Ethics. Well, that and the <laughs> fact I've got a couple of silly cars, and the last thing you need is alcohol in a system with something with freaking six hundred plus horsepower. So I had one question and I never got an answer. So, so where, where do you want to work? <laughs> oh yeah, no, we did have that one, didn't we? Oh yeah, man. sorry, that, that was actually literally on my list over here. Is the first question no. you could ask. <laughs> That's a tough one because you're right. I'm, I, I love the tactical side of the world. Um, I, I, I thrive on that. And I was actually talking to a friend about this today. I thrive on chaos. You know, I'm really good at going in, sorting shit out, then handing the keys back and saying, "Don't screw it up again." But the problem is there's this other part of me that just wants a peaceful, civilized, normal, bloody world to work at. There is a part of me that, you know, if, if, um, if one of the big banks and finance companies said, ah, come and work for us as a you know, CISO or something, I'd be like, absolutely splendid. And I get in there and I'd probably be good for a month. And then I'd probably end up trying to cause my way to get out of there or something. So I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, I came out of obviously the Ativo stuff and I'm doing consulting, the CISO stuff. All right, all right, Al. You chime in with me because I think you got my back on this one. I, I can't imagine Chris with his uh, what are you, a Royal Marine British ever Marine thinking Commander, yeah. about the universe as me. I mean, I, every day you probably wake up saying how to make the world better. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I do it. I'm not a Royal Marine. Right? Pretty much so, yeah. 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 So I can't imagine this part. Half of it is what do you want to do? Yeah. The other half is how do I save the world? Yeah. Is there, there's, there's, in the Venn diagram, is there a middle part? I think there is. I just, I just don't know where. Back to what we we're talking about, like with the, the dot mil dot gov dot research. But the problem is, I want to see change. Like working for a research institute would probably drive me nuts, because I want, I want to see change. That's why I do a lot of the stuff that I do because, yeah. I want to affect change, and I. I haven't yet, to your point, I haven't yet found found the right home, I think, where I can affect change enough and diversely enough, you know, back to the, I don't just want to affect change in the US, you know, you, you look at, you look at the global, you, you just look at all the freaking issues everywhere else, you're like, look, give me, give me, a, give me six months, I can fix that for you, just, just let me concentrate, put food on my table, I've got it covered. Yeah, it's, it's worthy of, I mean, the strategy of, of how do you impact the world? I mean, you look at Bill Gates and the dude, you know, that he's, exactly. you know, he's trying very hard to impact the world, but, but what's the best way? Do you save Africa first or do you save the United States first? Or do you yeah. save Europe first? I mean, it, it's, it, he's got the billions and billions and granted, I mean, he doesn't have to let the government figure out how to do it. He can do it himself. And that's, right. I, that's why I love the Gates Foundation. To me, I've done some stuff with the Gates Foundation over the years. I will say um, I'm a firm believer, on, and I learned this, again, partly in the military and also partly from the family stuff in the UK and Scotland. To me, charity begins at home. Um, I, and, and I think that's one of those big things for me. I don't want to be that person that goes out and tells you how to fix all your stuff if my shit's still broken. I want to take the time to fix my yeah. problems. I want to get my own house in order. I knew you were religious, right? No, <laughs> no, remove, I got... Remove the log from your own eye before the splinter of another. Oh, right? yeah, mean, uh, okay, exactly. that's fair. That's fair. It's, it's, it's a very interesting... So, so to that end, yeah. do you think that the Gates Foundation is doing right by America, <laughs> by focusing on Africa and uh -huh. underdeveloped nations? 
uh, if That's you go by question. that defined term, I'd have to say no. I would have to say no. But 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 you listen. I mean, but he's he's healthy. he's a very Bill Gates is a very interesting person, and, and and I have to say that he he belongs in a different category of billionaire than than Elon Musk. Yes. Uh, by the way, I yeah. love the meme about Elon Musk. Right? Some people love their children so much they make a password out of it. Right? <laughs> 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 <That's all laughs> that. like, yes. Right? Who would do that to a kid? I mean, like. What the fuck were you smoking? You know what? A, a I actually kid. like Elon because he's a D and D player. I'm a hardcore D and D player. <laughs> you know, I, I I can't throw him under the bus. I mean, the dude is. But 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 Bill Gates is different, though, Jeremy. I mean, Bill Gates is a. I mean, the dude actually reads. I mean, you know, the factfulness book, the growth book. I mean, he reads hardcore he cares. stuff. I, I try to catch up to his brain power. He cares. And, and, to me, he cares. He, he does. Cares. But I will yeah. tell you, back in the day, um, I remember working at IBM and competing against him, right? When Same. Yeah. Right? When, but, but, and then in the OS2 business, back when Gerson was uh, running the company. But yes, I remember. And the fact is, is that he saw a path to success that this big company couldn't do, and that was engaging the developers. But this yeah. is very important, Al. I think it's about Bill Gates. Is Bill Gates, you know, when he, in the fact film of his book, he talks about the fact that don't remember something in the past that's not true today, right? Don't remember a fact that China's blah, 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 when they're not the same person today. And that's I think true. that, and Bill Gates brought up a, a, a story about a guy in the airport who would sell these, these newspapers. And Bill Gates didn't have the money. And the guy said, pay me when you're richer. Pay me when you're better, right? Forward. Yeah. And, and Bill Gates visited that guy later on. He said, do you remember him? And he said, yeah. And he says, you know, and he started talking about the money. He says, listen, if you gave back then, it would have meant more, right? That, 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 that the point of the matter is, is that it's easy to give now. You're a billionaire. Yeah. yeah. It's harder to give when you're poor. It's harder to give when you're new. You know, we, we talk about these kids. One of the questions I never asked you, Chris, was about, you know, I love the B-sides. I am a yeah. B-side junkie. Oh, yeah. 90% of the B-sides is bullshit. I've heard it a thousand times before. They don't even know what they're talking about. They've never done it. And then there's a kid that gets on stage, and he's passionate, and he has insight, and it's brilliant. And you're like, oh, my God, why are you not on the main stage? At RSA right? or freaking Blackout or somewhere. He's somebody. not yeah. stuck in the cock of somebody reviewing the papers. Yeah. Well, 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 now you're going to get me on my soapbox with Gartner and, and these others. So. Ooh, yeah, but, uh, yeah let's wanna, jump. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> not going there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Bill Gates. Hey, is I, you know what, I'm, not, I'm a fanboy of Bill Gates because I think that he truly cares, Jeremy. I think, and I, I guess I'm more talking to Jeremy than Chris. No, I, I, I get it. I know I get it. Uh, but but you know, if you go by if you go by what Jeremy said, it's tough. Now, yes, they do a ton inside the United States. But then again, so the argument against Jeremy's thing is like, okay, what are our influences? You know, in order to repair some of the stuff inside the US, what other countries do we actually need to take a look at and go, how can we help you that eventually helps us? Like, Al, exactly. which generation are we? Do you remember JFK? I mean, even though I wasn't alive when JFK was alive, I right? Was. We're citizens of the world before we're citizens of the in United fact, States. I was in Germany when he was over there. My old man was in the Army. And he had to run guard duty when he was there. No shit. Oh, See, that's I, totally am a, cool. I, I am a jelly donut, right? I mean, the yeah, famous, I'm, 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 I'm a donut. Donut. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Al, when were you at IBM? I'm just intrigued on this one, if you don't mind. You should get him to talk about the MASH commercials. <laughs> I hired in from uh, 79 and retired from them at the end of 2010. He's an AS400 dude. And no. I, I do remember a stint in California where uh, I was on the AS system 36. You know. Yeah, 36s. Oh, yeah. And, and AS400, when that was first coming out, IBM hired – the mash actors to do commercials. Yep. And I, I was responsible for being there with them as they were filming those. 
Who so, didn't hack an AS400, right? A little, a little <laughs> confession. Um, I was working for Cheltenham, um, oh. and I got deployed into IBM to help build. Do you remember when Compaq came out with their Smart Start stuff? Yes. And IBM went, oh, shit. I was actually part of the team that was hired to build SCO Unix, Novell Network, OS2, and this new thing called Windows NT onto the IBM hardware at a maiden Unix? Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Holy oh, smoke. So, yeah. And I, I was We're part of that team. We're ourselves and now. We... <laughs> Chris, I'm surprised he's still alive. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Go. Oh my God. I don't think anybody even fucking knows. Uh, we stress tested. We stress tested mouse and cows using Doom. We were actually able to convince our team in the UK to stress test mouse and cows oh, wow. using Doom and Quake Nukem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We it's used amazing. Doom nice. lots over the army. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were testing stuff. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, a lot, I of fun. Memories there. a lot of memories back then. I had fun. We used to we used to go. So we were um, we were down in it was Basingstoke called Bracknell, wherever it was. It was down south, and we would race up to Greenock up in Scotland, where the manufacturing facilities were with the new builds because we couldn't send them up faster. It was actually faster for us. And a really good friend of mine who was the head of those guys, he had an old Ferrari three hundred eight. I was I I was Ooh. government, but I was IBM, so I was allowed a little bit of flexibility. I had an old Lotus Esprit HC, and we would race from Basingstoke Brannell up to up oh. to basically the Hilton up in Greenock, up in Glasgow, and we would race it. Whoever got there last ended up having to put. Whoever got there last had to put dinner and the whiskeys because the whiskey menu in Glasgow at the Hilton there it was like a hundred <laughs> long, and we had oh. and whoever got there last had to use the expenses. It's freaking. Mm. Do you want the show. logic of uh, the last person to get drunk has to drive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was some fun days. I, simpler, simpler days, definitely. They, they were. Yeah. They were. Because I came out of the Navy as a cryptographic electronics tech on, on communications gear. Yeah, they were still using the Caesar cipher at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wasn't going to go there. I wasn't going to go there. You carry pigeons with one time about, use pads. You no, know, using tubes and flip flop circuits and mixing things up. Oh, my God. But in the, in the Navy, you had to do board level repair back then, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so when uh, so I came over, I, my logic for being in the U.S. was because we uh we had a i was working again for for cheltenham and we were deployed with uh the army and some of the other guys and we were actually doing war games against us and it was against the navy intel guys and um we 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 took it a little too far you know it was like oh let's teach the yanks of things or two and apparently we set up all sorts of little red alarm bells and all sorts of interesting places <laughs> and uh yeah i ended up coming over to the us to basically help fix some of the stupid shit that we broke Oh yeah. Well, no, I, I, what was frustrating is when I left the Navy, uh, we had later found out that that U S spy, right. Had given these decode cards because it used to be punch cards, which by the way, which by the way, I still have punch cards. In ah, stop it. Stop awesome. It. Awesome. Stop it. You I can't go back that far. Brown. I can't go back. I still got my floppy drive. Hang on. There's my windows. Uh oh, Oh yeah. No, no, no. So I, you know what? <laughs> Don't ever say it that I'm anal. Look at the freaking boxes behind Chris. He oh, has yeah. got a box for fucking everything. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's wow. my window. Oh, that's my toolkit. That's my floppy drive toolkit. Wow. Oh, there we go. IBM OS2. There's my IBM OS2. My I IBM OS2. You know what's really sad, Chris? Is is I've been throwing away all my floppy disks. I still I have my downstairs. I have a Lisa. You know, oh I, I yeah. Lisa. But you still have it? Is it still I, functional, Chris? Yeah, it is. And yeah. I, saw, I, I actually, even though I have my latest Wired magazine up there, I have Wired one through like sixty. I was a huge Wired fan. Be between that and Mondo, right. I was a huge. Oh uh, yes. Old two seconds. <laughs> All right. The Opie goes. We're gonna find something interesting. This is gonna be where we're gonna put the bookmarker. And we're good. <laughs> He's going, here's the real to real. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty quick. I just had to unplug it. So I've got two of these. 
I have this one, which I've left exactly as it is, but I have another one of these, and I'll show it to you guys in a second. I have another one, which is on the, in, the, in the hardware area. What I've done with the other one is I've built an Arduino into it, and the Arduino goes out to the keyboard, and I've remapped the keyboard in it, and I'm gonna use it on a pen test one day. And what I wanna be able to do is break into a freaking company with one of these. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna say, Claire, what is that? Oh, this is a Sinclair ZX81. Yeah. I want to literally walk into a company one day with the, with one of that looks exactly like this. I want to jack it into a monitor and sit here on a keyboard and pwn them with the ZX81. Yes, it'll have an Arduino in the back. I don't care. I, but I, I want to pwn them with a ZX81. Chris, I, I love you. I can't tell you how much I love you. I've never seen anybody yank a Sinclair out. I wanted a Sinclair uh -oh. so badly as a kid. There you go, Jeremy. I will. Nice. The same kind of thing. I got, yeah. I got a, 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 a distribution of Cali running on this little guy. Oh, that sweet. Is. That's basically what I'm going to drop on that. That's what's going on that thing. <laughs> yeah, full open stack with Cali guys. on it and a you, bunch you, of antennas. Yeah, I hate it's... you guys. I mean, I, I'll tell you this sob story, but it doesn't compare to this. I hate you. Oh. Uh, come on, just bring out your speaking spell that you've uh, read. <laughs> oh my God, you know what? So, we, so Chris was probably there with Grandmaster Rat brought out his speaker spell in like DEF CON yes. 7. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. So, Chris, you were talking about OS2. I, I was on the OS2 team at one point, and, and in fact, uh, I was the product manager at the time for the last OS2 Warp server-free business. No came out shit. In, <laughs> in, London, in London for the yeah. announcement, right? And they yeah. had bombings going off in the subway and stuff. Oh, like that. yeah. Right? But what was interesting is back in those 90s, we took OS2 and we would do software-defined stuff with multiple NICs and things that, that people were touching on now. Yeah. You know, how yep. many years later? I, I don't even want to get nothing new. <laughs> I still there's, have there's my t-shirt. nothing really new. I still yeah. have my t-shirt. OS2, uh, it was OS2, or well, NT up and coming, OS, whatever. I still have that bloody t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the no, days of old are fun. To ah. Oh, my God, yeah. But you're right. I mean, it's, it's old. Yeah. When Jeremy I said, I mean, there's so much stuff. I mean, you look at the VAX VMSs and Unix and the Linux and the ICL systems, and we were doing like, to some degree, virtualization architectures back then. And you look at the stuff today, I'm like, yeah, we, we, I remember doing some of that stuff. You know, we were able to do all, you know, now we can just do it faster and cheaper in all honesty. Easier. Yeah, yeah easier. There we go. We'll go definitely that one. Yeah, it, it, listen, there, there's a lot of, lot of uh, interesting stuff. I remember when we moved from uh, the suburbs to our ranch here in central Texas, that um, we had to go clean the attic out. Well, all of my old IBM stuff from back in, you know, early eighties and things. And that's back in the day when I was working on MVS, right? VM. And, oh yeah. And, and then the mainframes repairing those. But, but we found my son's first edition Nintendo game with a whole stack of games in it that still worked. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I still have mine. <laughs> I was That's an Intellivision cool. child. I don't think anybody loved Intellivision. <laughs> All right. Uh, listen, uh, <laughs> I, I know we could probably talk forever. And, 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 yeah, and thank, <laughs> thank you, Al. Chris, that you're, you've got to bring head out. Bring it home, Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring us home, buddy. Bring us home. <laughs> get, get, bring us a guitar. <laughs> a good e riff. We very, very much appreciate the discussion tonight, Chris. And this and was honestly, awesome. love you guys. Uh, we'd this love to fun. have you guys have you back on our show again because I, I think yeah, we for sure. talk for days and Thank days, you. quite honestly. Uh, I'll yeah, bring, yeah, I'll bring Chris, a different beer. B sides are doing, man. I'd love to hook up on a B side when they start showing up again. Oh, I'm Same. totally up for it. Yeah, I'm totally up for it. I that absolutely huge amount of love for the freaking B sides community. Yeah, yeah, I do. You know what? You say that, and the other one is Drag Goose up in Kansas. I mean, he, I, I, I miss Dry Goose. I, I didn't hit that one. My, I got to be honest, my, my home, probably where I consider to be able to relax, let all the guards down, to be honest, um, a few other Good. things is Gurkhan up in Grand Rapids, up in Michigan. Oh, um, oh wow. Yeah, Interesting. That one, that one is, it's the 10th year is this year, and Eddie Mize and I are going to be up on stage together doing the keynote for it. 
that one for me has, it's maintained its, its life and its feel throughout the years and it's grown, but it's kind of been capped for the last X number of years. And I just, uh, Chris Payne, who's, who runs it, he does that in Burke on, I, I don't know how he's managed it and, and, and I love him for it, but I mean, it's still got that cool feel. It's, it's half students and half crazy people I, like us. I'll put that on our list. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go there. I want to yeah. go there. Cause I love, well, we do have a client in Grand Rapids, so that's an easy. You know what? Grand Rapids is the city, the city for beer. Oh my gosh! Uh, flipping dragons, dragons. Um, who the hell is it? Dragons, dragons milk is up there. Those buggers. <gasps> really, dragons milk? Oh. Yeah, they're they're literally. You can walk oh from the conference. God. It's about a six block walk. Yeah, they're wow. a milk stout place now. Sixteen percent, sixteen percent. It's the spot. They do a cherry one as well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Yes. I, I got actually I got some dragons milk. I I haven't pulled it out yet. Damn. Gotta do it. Gotta I'll do, do the right. Active Bruce. All right, now, <laughs> gentlemen. We'll end this one because it's like an hour and a half show here for this time around. But again, thank you so much, Chris. I'm looking forward to continuing yeah, dialogues totally. and enjoying your shows. For those who don't know, he's got a new. Uh, series out if you want to talk to that real quick chris and just introduce it oh yeah security shit show so all credit to that goes to evan <laughs> evan frankel i mean it literally is it's security <laughs> shit show and it's we have a lot of fun doing it let's just put it that way you can find it security shit show.com come hang out listen it's it's like this but with more swearing to be perfectly honest yeah, yeah. well it's about it's about getting down to brass tactics about the truth yeah. and what yeah what a lot yeah. of the pains are that don't get addressed in industry. And so I, yeah. I know I've listened to it and found it very enlightening. So thank you. Thank you. No, yeah, I appreciate Chris. it. Thank you guys. All right, Chris. Well, thank you. So Absolute much. pleasure. Love you. Thank you very much, guys. You. Yeah. Right, you guys take care. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Take bye care. Bye-bye, guys.